Hey, what's up, everybody? James Annan here with Expert Web Consulting. And in this video, I'm going to talk about a very important sales psychology technique called consistency and commitment. And understanding what this means and applying it to your business marketing strategy can really help in gaining more customers and keeping them. So to start off, I'm going to talk about consistency. I'm going to talk about how we as people, uh, we like to stay consistent, or at least we, we really want to be consistent. Definition of consistency is the steadfast adherence to the same principles, course, form, etc. Uh, and, and wanting to be consistent can be a very, very powerful thing in marketing. If you've ever been to a barber or a hairstylist that you really like the way that, you, that they do your hair, you try and go back to them every time, right? It's because you like the results and, and you want to have the same results every time. You want to be organized and you want to be able to know what to expect. This is called consistency, and it's in human nature to want to stay consistent in the way that we do things, especially if we're happy with the results. Also, we want to be known as people who are consistent with what we say and what we do. We don't want to be known as people who, who can't follow through and we can't finish the things that we start on. We don't want to be known as quitters. We use consistency all the time. If you're watching this and you're trying to listen and learn something, uh, chances are you're using the same style that you always use when you're trying to listen. Because that's your style and that's what works for you. You're probably not blaring music and you're probably not chatting on the phone. And when I'm sitting here talking and trying to sh teach these things, I'm using the same style that I always do when I try, try to teach. And that's by using uh, PowerPoint. I'm using images and breaking things down because it's clear and concise. And I think that's the, the best way to do it. So I do that every single time and I stay consistent with that teaching style. All right, so, so that's, that's what consistency means. And another thing uh, that's very important to understand in all this is something called personas. And we all have these things called personas. In fact, we all have multiple personas. That doesn't mean we have multiple personalities. They're different. The, different or the definition of a persona is the role that one assumes or displays in pu public or in society. So again, we all have multiple personas that we take on all the time for different areas of our lives. For example, we all have a certain persona that you take on at work as a working professional, and another persona that we take on as a parent, another persona as a spouse, maybe you have a persona as a coach, and you probably have an entirely different persona when you're out relaxing with friends. We have, we have different behaviors according to whatever persona we're in at that time, and within each persona, we take actions that we think are in line with that particular persona. And each time we're in a particular persona, we try and be consistent with the way we act in that persona every single time we're in that persona. And those actions that we take while we're in a particular persona are called our commitments to that persona. So we, we try to make the same commitments within each persona every time we're in those personas. Okay, so, so what does any of this have to do in business? Well, since we as people try and stay consistent, then that means that it can be very hard to get someone to do business with you if they've already made a prior commitment and done business with your competitor, and if that customer is happy with your competitor. So over here we have our competitor and we have our customers here. And if someone is already a customer of your competitor, they're, they're going to continue to be their customer because they want to be consistent, because they're satisfied with them, they know them. Uh, and this may be before you were even around or they even knew you existed and why fix something that isn't broken how can you possibly get that customer to break that possible strong commitment with the other guy and decide to establish a new one with your business and get them to establish a relationship with you and start using you consistently I mean this this just doesn't happen randomly how can we get to do that well the first thing that's very important to understand is that people don't like to be too consistent People are always willing to change things up, but they first have to be convinced that doing so is the better option. If people already have a strong commitment to your competitors, it can be very hard to get them to switch to you. But in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how to do it. The key is to start small and then build on that. So I know a girl who used to own a PC. She was strictly a PC girl, so she had a persona as being a PC girl. She'd never used a Mac or an Apple. Uh, she didn't even own any Apple products, didn't want to. She had a strong commitment to PC because she was always happy with their computers. Uh, now, then the iPod came out. and She already had an MP3 player, but it was getting old and the time came where she needed something new and there was room for a change. Many of her friends, including me, had iPods and she decided that she was going to try it out, so she bought one. 
Now, that didn't abruptly shift her personas over to an Apple fan. And she didn't just go out the next day and buy an Apple computer, but it was a tiny crack in her persona as strictly a PC person. And she loved her iPod. She used it all the time. And then she started using iTunes to, on her computer to transfer music to her iPods. And then, a few years later, the iPhone came out. Now, she already had this small persona as an Apple customer. She knew the name. She had used them before, and she had gotten value out of it. So what happened? She ended up getting an iPhone. And she loved it, and she still loves it. And you might start to see where this is going now, because uh, when, when the time came for her to get a new computer eventually, about a year later, guess what she decided to buy? It was a Mac. And she has now trans transformed her entire persona from that of a PC fan all the way to that of an Apple fan. And it all started with that little iPod that she bought years ago. Now this probably happened to quite a few people out there in the world, and this is why everyone knows who Apple is, and this is why Apple makes billions and billions of dollars every single year. The moral of this story is that if you get people to make just a small commitment to something with your name on it, then they're more likely to make another commitment to something with your name on it. They're more likely to do it again and again with something bigger and something bigger because they're starting to become consistent with your name because that's something that we naturally try to do as people as long as we're getting value out of it. And this is how you can slowly but surely turn people into your customers just like Apple did. And Apple hasn't stopped yet. Their latest release is the iPad. Um, now, is she going to go out and buy an iPad? I don't know, but I do know that a lot of people are buying them. In fact, according to Apple.com's annual reports, they've sold over 50 million iPad units as of December 2011. And this is only solidifying people's personas as strong Apple users. And you have to give credit to the late Steve Jobs because he was the mastermind behind all of this. And he's, the, you know, the main reason behind uh, the, the success of these Apple products. And this is the model of success that he laid out for you and for I to follow. And he didn't just, he didn't just offer a bunch of products just to get customers. He truly wanted to change people's lives and leave his mark. And I'd say he did, did a good job in doing that. And if you want to leave your mark, I'd suggest doing something similar and offering more than just one product or service that people can use and get value from. Another quick example is of Jim Beam, which is a world-famous brand name that is known for their bourbon whiskey. A quick Google search about Jim Beam will reveal that it is currently one of the best-selling bourbons on the entire planet. Uh, one year I got some Jim Beam barbecue sauce as a Christmas present. I didn't even know Jim Beam made barbecue sauce until I got this. And Jim Beam isn't made for their barbecue, or they're not known for their barbecue sauce, but this is a great way for them to appeal to an entirely new crowd. It's just an example of them making something small and in a totally different market than liquor to get people to use something with their name on it, especially younger people who wouldn't even be able to buy their bourbon or even know about their bourbon until they're old enough to buy it. People can still commit to the Jim Beam brand name and start building a persona as a Jim Beam customer way before they may even know about their specialty product, which is the alcoholic drink. And I also found out that Jim Beam makes sunflower seeds in three different flavors. They also make beef jerky. They make mustards, hot sauce, wing sauce, uh, seasoning, and they even make pancake syrup. And there are plenty of other products that Jim Beam offers as well. If you count all these up, that's 13 times the amount of exposure that they're giving themselves. And if you eliminate all these other products and you only have the one, then there's probably no chance that they're able to that they would have this amount of success that they have today but since they offer all these other products they do a great job of getting people to build personas as customers through these other small products it's no accident that Jim Beam is on the is one of the top selling bourbons on the entire planet they did so through strategic marketing and manufacturing of these smaller products they've mastered the whole idea that we've been talking about here just like Apple did in their industry Every successful company has done this, and if you want to get to a high level of success, you've got to be doing this as well. No matter what product or service you provide, you can always think of something else, something smaller to offer people. Another small service or a small item with your brand name on it, but it must contain value. Chances are you'll get a whole new set of people who will use it and get value from it. Now those people will know your business name. They've built a persona as your customer, and they're more likely to use you again over any random list of competitors that they may find online. So if you offer more, more services, you can separate yourself. You can even do fun events too, like sponsor an event and target a specific audience. You can create a new event and put your name on it, or you can do sponsor charities and benefit events. 
there's all kinds of different opportunities out there where you can be doing these types of things and if you're not doing things like this then you're really putting yourself at risk because there's a chance that someone will come along in your line of work and start doing some of these things and start taking away your competitors or start taking away your customers I mean so it's important for you to at least think about ways where you can implement some of the strategies here that, that we've talked about so we already know that commitments are a very powerful thing but let me let you in on another secret and that secret is that public commitments are much more powerful than personal commitments for example let's say that you decided that you want to lose 15 pounds and you want to go on a diet so you make a personal commitment to yourself and you tell yourself that you're gonna go on a diet and, and lose this weight no matter what so a week goes by and you're kinda of getting tired of your diet already but you know you're gonna stick it out then another week goes by and you find yourself at a birthday party all your friends are there everyone's celebrating having a good time having a few drinks eating cake and then you see that cake and you really want a slice of that cake because look how good that cake looks so you try to stay strong but you know you, you end up giving in and you have a big slice of that cake and you decide you'll just start on the diet again next week but then Monday comes around it just doesn't happen you kinda of fell off your diet um, you know maybe next week though right who knows so if we go back and what happens if you would have made that that announcement on Facebook that you were gonna lose 15 pounds then everyone sees it you've got people liking your status commenting on it your friend decides to do it with you and then that birthday party comes back around and some of those people see you and they remind you of your diet and they say hey how's the diet going uh, but then, and then when that cake comes out you you, uh, you kinda wanna eat it just like before but you're more likely to stay strong and not go out and eat it because everyone there knows you're losing weight you're on a diet and you wanna stay consistent with what you said on Facebook you wanna, you wanna be known as a consistent person so you don't eat the cake and what do you know Monday comes back around you're still on your diet and you're happy with yourself congratulations now this is an example of how public commitments can be much stronger than personal commitments because everyone sees that and it's all the successful businesses know that so if you can get someone to make a public commitment to your business name then they've just made a much stronger commitment to you and they're more likely to use you again in the future or recommend you to other people that's why people make wristbands that have their name on it that's why every big and dominating company has t-shirts hats and other products that you can wear it's because those businesses understand that when people wear those they're making a public commitment to those brands in front of everyone and that's a very strong unconscious commitment that, that those people are going to naturally keep using that brand name in the future because of it building long-term consistency plus those companies are getting good promotion out of this too which is like a double whammy so make wristbands make hats shirts anything that people can wear give them away if you have to and all this may sound kind of obvious and simple, but it's important to understand the psychology behind why things are done so that you can fully understand and utilize all these techniques in your business marketing strategies so that you can truly put yourself in a position to win customers and build those long-lasting relationships. And another quick thing to mention, uh, while you're out making these t-shirts and things like that, make them cool so that people actually want to wear them. People don't like to wear shirts that make them look like a walking billboard. They just won't, they just won't wear them. These pictures I used are just quick, a few quick ones that I grabbed off the internet. And you don't really see very many people wearing shirts like these, just because they make you look like a walking billboard. So make them more stylish, and or make them have a funny phrase on them or something, or or just a few of each, just to appeal to more people's styles, and that's just more publicity for you. Okay, so how can you make people make public commitments online on the internet? quick example is the Facebook like button this is extremely valuable to businesses when people like something whether it be a business a musician or a group or whatever whatever else it may be this is a very strong and public commitment that people are making towards you because everyone else can see that plus it's influencing other people to look at that thing that was liked, and that's why it's very important for you to have a business page or a group for people to like I used to work as a server at a restaurant and the restaurant ran a special that if any customer came in and liked the restaurant on Facebook from their phones and showed it to their server that they did this then that customer would get a free dessert so whenever I told customers about this special they thought it was a great idea and the younger ones would always pull out their phones and they would like the business page and they would get the free dessert this is a great way to build consistency because that like but or that that like is a public commitment that everyone sees and now now in the future that customer will remember the restaurant for this and it increases the chances that they'll return in the future and tell people about the special that they got 
or recommend it to other people. So, and, and plus it influences other people at the same time. So maybe you can think of ways to offer some sort of promotional deal, you know, involving the, the Facebook like button or something like that with, with your products and your services. Okay, so how do you, how can you build consistency and commitment on your own website? We know that public commitments are much stronger than personal commitments and there's a great way to get people to make public commitments right there on your website. Those things are called testimonials. After you're done doing business with someone, ask if you can have a testimonial from them. And if they enjoyed using you, they'd probably be happy to give you one. A testimonial can be a paragraph or just a few sentences long, but put these up on your website somewhere, maybe in their own page called testimonials. This is a very strong display of someone's public commitment towards you, and it increases the chances that they'll use you again or recommend you to others. If one of your, uh, if one of your customers has a website or a business of their own, it's better to get a testimonial from them because they, they likely have a larger network of people that you are now tied into. Because if any of those because your, your customer who gave you that testimonial, uh, they'll likely recommend you to their network of people if those people ever need your services that you provide. So now let's say that there's a complete and total stranger that comes onto your website and he, he's thinking about doing business with you. So this person's on the computer looking at your website, he's reading all your testimonials, but he has no idea who these testimonials are from. He sees their name, but to him, they're total strangers. How does this guy even know if those testimonials are even from real people? Because they could be entirely made up. Well, there's a great way to get, uh, to get more out of these testimonials and, and use them in a way that's going to influence this person to want to do business with you more. Um, but I'm not going to tell you about it right now because I actually made an entirely different video on this th on this whole entire subject and it's called how to use testimonials the right way. So make sure you check out that video because testimonials can help you out greatly in influencing new customers to want to do business with you. Okay, so in conclusion, just know that people will always try and be consistent with what they what they do and what they say. And because of this, if you can get someone to buy something with your name on it, they're more likely to continue to buy products with your name on it as long as they're getting value from it. Remember that uh, you can break a prior commitment by starting small. If people aren't doing business with you, it's because they've already made prior commitments to a competitor and they have stuck with them. In order to win over new customers, offer something else. Offer something smaller. Get them to establish a relationship with your name and then you can build on that. Public commitments are stronger than personal commitments because everyone sees them. Try and offer deals if people like if people like you on Facebook and try to get testimonials from people with a larger network. Also make merchandise that people can wear, maybe even bumper stickers. Brainstorm some ideas, and I'm sure you can come up with some great things to do. But when you want to be successful, the key is to look at what other successful people have done and model that. In this video, I've talked about how some of the biggest companies out there in Apple and Jim Beam, Ford and Chevy, I mean, they're all using the stra these strategies that we've talked about. So, you know, my advice is get out there and try some of this stuff. And if you try something and it doesn't work, then that's fine. It's not a failure. Look at it as a success because you've successfully found a way that isn't going to work for you. Now you don't have to worry about trying it again, and you can move on to the next thing that could work. And if that doesn't work, then that's okay. Now you can move on to the next thing until you find ways that do work. I mean, you never know. That next idea could be that big one that really makes the business take off and it's these things that when done and done right you're really putting yourself in a position to be an industry leader and at the same time bringing more money doing what you love so that's all I've got for you today in this video uh, I want to thank you for for watching it and don't forget to check out my other videos just to learn more about great sales psychology techniques web design web marketing techniques that you can use in your in your marketing strategies so I'm James Anna with expert web consulting and I want to thank you again, and I hope everyone out there has a great day. Thanks.